Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, to our franchise hour, episode 11 already in our first season. And we have a very interesting topic today. We talk about intellectual properties. And uh, for that reason, I'll introduce first our speakers for today. We have uh, Mr. Adrian Zablan. He's from the Interne Intellectual Property Office of the Philippines. He is the program manager of the Innovation and Technology Support Office, a flagship program of the Intellectual Property Office. The ITSO, as it's called, 2.0, is an extensive network of 100 higher education systems and research and development institutions across the Philippines. Bank role to support creativity and to cause a robust innovation ecosystem in the country in sync with the demands of Industry 4.0. His extensive experience in technology transfer and licensing in the Philippines. With several years as lead evaluator of technology transfer, contracts including franchise agreements on famous global brands, lodged with IPO Phil, a foreign multinational corporation, as to the compliance <coughs> of these contracts with the pertinent provisions of the Philippine intellectual property law. He has spoken internationally and nationally in various organizations and forums, and he has been a resource person in the field of intellectual property, innovation, and technology transfer and licensing. Welcome, Mr. Adrian Sablan. Hi, thank uh, you. Uh, yes, Rudolf, thank you so much uh, for this opportunity, uh, for inviting welcome. me here to talk uh, uh, on intellectual properties. Thank yeah, you. and uh, good afternoon also to uh, uh, our fellow guests, uh, Secretary Neric and uh, the other from FIFA. So uh, thank you. I'm glad to be here. Thank you so much. Uh, our second uh, guest speaker today is Dr. Neric Acosta. He is the chair of the Philippine Center for Environmental Protection and Sustainability Development. From 2011 to 2016, he was secretary uh, and presidential advisor for environmental protection and concurrent general manager of the Laguna Lake Development Authority, which under his watch, the LLBA Green Climate Smart, Climate Smart Building was constructed, the first and to date only EERDE certified grid building of the Philippine government. As congressman from 1998 to 2007, where he represented uh, Pukitnon, Dr. Costa principally authored the groundbreaking laws on clean air, clean water, and solid waste management, along with seminal laws, biodiversity, and wildlife protection, and coastal resources, and caves management. He was co-head with the Climate Change Commission of the Philippine delegations to the 2015 United Nations COP21 Paris Accord, on the climate changes. He earned his PhD in political science at East West Center, doctorate fellowship from the University of Hawaii in 1994, and was world fellow of Yale University in 2004. Welcome, uh, Dr. Nerik Acosta. Yes, sir. And, Magandang and we have na. from the Filipino International Franchise Association, our trademark specialist, uh, Sokri Malako, who is hiding behind his mask. Welcome to the uh, Franchise Hour, all of you. So, uh, since each of you talk about a different topic, we will do you one by one. Uh, we will start at first with Mr. Adrian Sablon. And we will be talking about all what you can register practically at the Intellectual Property Office. And uh, therefore, I will be honored to do his uh, screen sharing for him. Give me one second. Because by accident, by accident. One second, I have a slight problem with my own sharing now. Uh, 
because uh, the, the file, my file closed also. So I have to open the file first so we can share it with you. And this always takes a little bit of a time. So let me try it again if it's already here. Not yet. One moment, please. This sucks. Okay. Now it's open. And we have it to share it now. There you go. All right. So, Mr. Sabland, please. Let's start. Hello? Okay, yes. Okay, yeah. thank you. Thank you again, RK. And uh, uh, our viewers might wonder what uh, what does intellectual property have to do with uh, business and uh, industry? Uh, and I hope that uh, this opportunity is going to educate as much as inform our public on uh, the role of intellectual property in particular and innovation in general in priming our national uh, economy. So I'll be talking on the basics of uh, intellectual property. So basically, what is uh, intellectual property? When you speak of intellectual property, we are referring to, in general, the creations of the mind. No? The creations of the mind, uh, please uh, click further. And uh, so we talk of familiar to you maybe, names, images, symbols, uh, which are used in commerce, inventions, literary, and artistic uh, works and designs, no? These are all creations of the mind. Further. And uh, so these are uh, examples of uh, intellectual property and intellectual property creations. All of these are products of uh, the human mind, okay? Further on. And so uh, intellectual property right is... Uh, a set of exclusive rights, no? uh, rights which are recognized and uh, conferred uh, either on an institution or an individual by the government, uh, specifically in the Philippines by the Intellectual Property Office of the Philippines, which is the only government office that uh, grants intellectual property rights on certain creations. So uh, we grant rights on distinct creation or product of the human mind for as long as they pass certain criteria. Okay, and uh, so uh, when we talk further on, uh, please uh, scroll down, RK. Uh, so we talk about uh, patents, uh, inventions, utility model, uh, literary and copyright and artistic work, no? All of these are important aspects and form part of intellectual property and intellectual property rights. Okay, next. So again, these are examples of intellectual property rights. We have patents, industrial designs, trade secrets, trademarks, geographic indications, layout designs, and copyright and related rights and utility models. And uh, we will be discussing each of these quickly uh, on uh, next slide. Okay, IP improves our daily lives, no? Uh, okay, IP is uh, for everyone. IP makes our lives more productive, fun, and sustainable. IP is not just for big companies. It is also for all of us. Okay, next slide. Okay, IP makes innovation possible. Innovators are recognized and rewarded. And IP, the IP system in the Philippines provides for incentive to create new technologies. And IP, the IP regime in the Philippines, uh, ensures quality and provides consumers with confidence in the quality of a product. Okay, next slide, please. Uh, and uh, well, IP, generates jobs uh, worldwide. IP supports the economy, 
It, it promotes the industry, it creates jobs, no? And stimulates innovation and contributes to the gross domestic product of the country. Okay, so the value of IP here, you know, these are actually popular uh, global brands, Apple, Google, Microsoft, of course, Facebook, Coca-Cola, and their corresponding value. So there is actually money, as in billions and billions of dollars, no, to uh, intellectual property, trademark, and all, no, if you have established name. For example, Jollibee, no? Uh, Mang Inasal no, was uh, bought by, uh, at least the trademark of Mang Inasal was purchased no, by uh, Jollibee Foods Corporation and uh, according to records from the Securities and Exchange Commission for trademark alone, no, uh, Mang Inasal was bought by Jollibee for serving 2 billion pesos. Again, that's just for trademark, just the name Mang Inasal and also Royal Pasta, no? Uh, the transaction was valued at $47.8 million or over 2 billion pesos covering mainly the Royal trademarks, goodwill, and inventories, no? And uh, of course, uh, we're saying that intellectual property is the oil of the 21st uh, century. Okay, next. So let's talk about patents, no? which is uh, maybe not common to everyone. So patent is not trademark and patent is not copyright, no? because that's the common misconception. A patent is an exclusive right granted for an invention, a product, a process, or improvement of any of the foregoing that provides new way of doing something or that offers a new and technical solution to a problem. Uh, a patent must be first novel, second, it must be inventive, and third, it must offer a technical solution to a technical problem. Three criteria for patent. And uh, when you are granted patent right, you are granted an exclusive right granted by uh, a sovereign state, uh, the Philippine government for that matter, to an inventor or a creator or an assignee for a limited period in exchange for detailed public disclosure of an invention, meaning you have to make public everything about your invention. The public must know everything about it. Next slide. Uh, patent protection is granted no, to an inventor or a creator. Uh, the right is, includes the right to exclude others or to prevent others from exploiting your technology from making or using or selling your technology without permission or without corresponding payment, no? Patent right does not give uh, the inventor or the creator an automatic right to uh, commercialize. However, you can sell your patent via several modes, no? Of, uh, for example, licensing could be exclusive licensing or non-exclusive uh, licensing. Dr. Acosta here is a licensor, no? So why are patents necessary? Talk about the evolution of the mobile phone, no? You, you just imagine how our mobile uh, phones have evolved over time and the evolution of uh, television, hindi ko na inabot ang mga ito, no? And, uh, but you can just imagine how a patent really is important to the development of innovation in a particular country. Next slide. So uh, the legal requirements for patent number one is novelty. It must your invention must be new, no, and it must involve inventive step. I cannot explain that here because that's a technical term. I, I hope we have really time for that. But uh, suffice it to say that uh, your invention really must not be obvious in te in terms of technical function to somebody who is an expert in the field. And another. It must be industrially applicable, meaning it has to offer a technical solution to a technical problem. It must be able to address a technical problem. Okay? So if you pass all of these requirements, the government will grant you a patent right and you will have the right to be called an inventor. There you go. Next slide. So, but these are non-patentable subject matters. Not everything can be patented. Discoveries, no? Uh, you're walking uh, along a road and uh, you stumble upon something that's a discovery 
that's not patentable. Any scientific theories and mathematical uh, methods, no? I used to teach statistics, but uh, any uh, formula, any mathematical methods are not uh, patentable. Programs for computers, at, le at least in the Philippines, softwares, computer softwares, computer programs are not patentable subject matters. Uh, some of these are patentable in the United States, no? Uh, we have uh, different rules as far as uh, this particular matter is concerned. But uh, generally, program for computers, they are not patentable subject matters. Schemes, rules, and methods of performing mental acts and playing games, not patentable. And methods for treatment of the human body or animal body, not patentable. Plant varieties or animal breeds or essentially biological process like microorganisms for the production of plants and animals, they are not patentable subject matters. Okay? And any aesthetic cre creations are also not patentable. Anything which is contrary to public order, health, welfare, or morality. If there are scientists, for example, who may want to come up with an explosive, for example, bombs, and you want to register with the government, no, you will not be given uh, registration at all. No? Any abstract idea or theories, no? An idea in itself is not protectable, no? So uh, that's it. Next slide. Then how do you obtain patent protection? Well, uh, you come to our office and file a request for the grant of patent. That's number one. Uh, you have to have a description of the invention or the claims of the patent, meaning those uh, features of your invention that uh, you want to be protected. Drawings necessary for understanding of the invention. Uh, we must understand, we must see what your invention is, at least the features. I mean, this should be visible to us. And uh, it has to have one or more claims, meaning claim that is what you are applying for to be protected. No, uh, A particular feature of your invention that you actually want to be protected. It can be just one, two, three, or more claims in one particular invention. And of course, an abstract. And then you wait for the examination because there could be, there will be, Formality examination, and there will be substantive examination, which is the longer term, no? Formality examination, that's just easy and short, but the substantive examination, that's long. Uh, in the Philippines and worldwide, no, the average uh, for you to be granted patent is three to four years from the date of your application. That's uh, the average worldwide, not just in the Philippines. But in other countries, it even takes longer than Okay, so next, timeline for patent application. You see it here fi from filing date. No, it takes uh, six months. And then you go through formality examination report, preliminary search report, and written opinion, uh, and all. And then you go subsequent formality examination report. And then you go for request for early publication, amendment to specification of claims and drawings, a lot. You know, you go through a lot of processes. That's just for formality examination uh, stage. Next. No? And, uh, and then request for substantive examination, which is, again, the longer term already. And uh, then you do community review because, you know, and we publish it. We publish it because we want to public, the public to know that uh, a patent is being applied for. And if there is any party... Uh, that might want to contest no? uh, the patent, no? so they can actually do that. Substantive examination, applicant's response, completion of final requirements, and notice of allowance up to the point of publication of letters patent, meaning you are already granted the patent for the average of three to four years in the Philippines. Next. Now, I talked about invention patent earlier this time. This is utility model, which is another type of patent, but we call this petty patent, not, really, not, not invention patent. No? A utility model is a protection option which is designed to protect innovations that are not sufficiently inventive to meet the inventive threshold required for standard patent applications. No? A utility model system provides protection of so-called minor inventions or petty patents or second rate patents no through a system similar to the patent system next slide 
So the legal requirements uh, for invention patent three, no? Uh, novelty, inventive step, and industrial applicability. But for UM, the most important was taken away, which is inventiveness or uh, non-obviousness. So there are only two requirements that uh, you have to hurdle. One is novelty, and the other is industrial applicability, meaning that your utility model also has to offer a technical solution to a technical problem. Next. Well, you go through application, but this is easier and shorter, a lot shorter. In fact, uh, as far as our office is concerned, you can be granted a patent, utility model patent within six months, or the earliest is three months, so between three and six months, from the point of application to formality examination and to the point of publication. In a matter of six months, you may be granted the utility model patent, okay? Next uh, slide. Of course, you have a registered report and dec decision to register or not. And then if the office finds that uh, your application is worthy to be granted UM, then we will register uh, your UM and you will be granted a certificate for that, which is your legal proof already. Okay, next. And another is industrial design, which is another type of patent. Uh, industrial design is an IP right that protects the aesthetic features and visual design of an article or of manufacture. Next. Uh, it is the physical appearance, form, shape, contour, ornamental aesthetic features that are protected, like shoes, for example. Next. No original creation. The conditions, no, it must be new and original. The article of manufacture not dictated by technical or functional considerations, not contrary to public order, health, and morals. Next. Five years, no, term of protection is five years. Oh, by the way, for invention patent, the term of protection is 20 years from the point of application. And for UM, it's uh, seven years from the point of application. For uh, industrial uh, design, it's five years from the filing date of the application and renewable two consecutive periods of five year each, okay? But for invention patent, it is not renewable. Utility model is also not renewable. Only industrial design patent is renewable, okay? Next. Examples of the industrial designs, look, okay? So it's actually the design, the feature, the look that is being protected. Okay, well, let's talk about copyright, just uh, brushing through everything. Copyright. What is copyright? Copyright is the legal protection extended to the owner of the rights in an original work that you created. No, That's according to the World Intellectual Property Organization, the mother of all intellectual property families in the world, which is based in Geneva, Switzerland. The WIPO is a United Nations body. Okay, next. How is uh, copyright acquired? Works are protected by the sole fact of their creation, irrespective of the mode or form of expression, as well as their content, quality, and purpose. Take note that for copyright, the protection is automatic from the moment or from the point of creation. I will say that again for emphasis for everyone. No, uh, Anything that is expressed in a tangible form that has an empirical value, okay? expressed in a tangible form is copyrightable. Imagine that, regardless of content. Kung saan mo pa sa Bisaya, bisag wala, yun siya hinungdan, no? It, 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 may not, it may not mean anything, no? Uh, for as long as you express it, uh, it is seen, no? And uh, regardless of purpose, regardless of shape whatsoever, it is protectable, okay? It is copyrightable, at the moment, at the point of creation. The, the protection is already yours from the point of creation. Okay, next slide. Idea or expression dichotomy. Remember this, however, that only the expression of an idea is protected by copyright, not the idea itself. You may have several, so many precious, precious Brilliant ideas accumulating in your mind, but for as long as they remain as ideas, they cannot be protected. Only when these ideas are expressed into form can they be protected by 
copyright. Okay? Next slide. So, these are examples no, of copyrightable materials, literary artistic works, books, uh, pamphlets, articles, and other writings, etc., periodicals and newspapers, lectures, even sermons of pastors and priests, no, addresses, speeches, and all dissertation theses, letters, dramatic or dramatic musical compositions, choreography, entertainment, in dumb shows, etc. Next. Musical compositions, even with or without words, works of drawing, painting, architecture, sculpture, engraving, lithography, and others, original ornamental designs of models for articles and manufacturers, whether or not registrable as an industrial design, and other works of applied art. All of these are copyrightable subject matters. Next. Next slide. Okay, uh, here uh, we talk of uh, derivative works, dramatizations, translations, adaptations, abridgments, alterations, and all. No, all of these are copyrightable. Next slide. So, what rights does copyright provide? One is economic rights. You, you, you are given the right to reproduce, to translate, to adapt, to exhibit, to distribute, to broadcast, to communicate, to work to the public, and to commercialize, meaning to make millions and millions and millions of dollars, even billions of dollars of money from copyright. Okay, next. Moral rights, rights which maintain a personal link between authors and their work, which means to say that if Dr. Neric Acosta, being an academician, publishes a book, or publishes his dissertation, for example, and somebody uh, quotes from his dissertation, uh, he has to be, I mean, he has to be properly recognized, he has to be cited, uh, his work has to be properly attributed to. He is entitled to that moral right. And at the same time, he's also, also entitled uh, to protest to any uh, attempt at distortion or at distorting any of his works, just for example, okay? So uh, you, have, uh, you have the right to be recognized as the author of the work. You have, you have the right to object to any changes to the work which could damage the author's honor or reputation. You can say no, no, okay? Next. So economic rights, what can be transferred? You can transfer your economic rights. Authors may decide to sell the works by assignment, no? meaning IP assignment. If you assign that to somebody, like a bookstore, for example, wants to buy your book by, uh, by IP assignment mode, by IP assignment, meaning you now lose all your rights to your IP, to your copyright, and you effectively transfer those rights to the buyer of your copyright. You can also do that via licensing. If you do that, then you are called a licensor and the buyer is called a licensee. You can go exclusive licensing, non-exclusive licensing, so licensing, no, there are other modes actually of, of uh, licensing. And then you have moral rights, as I said, you have independent, the moral rights are independent of economic rights. The author should always remain and this is the only right that cannot be taken away, which means to say that even if you do IP assignment, you sell your economic rights, but the moral rights are not sold along with the economic rights. What are being, uh, what is what is sold? You only sold your uh, economic rights, but not your moral rights, which means to say that if you write a book, your book still, must, your name still must appear on the book or on the manuscript. Okay, next. So you just register and deposit your copyrighted works anytime and anywhere online because the Intellectual Property Office of the Philippines is now 100% online. Okay, next slide. So you do that, just download and fill out the registration and deposit form. A visit our website www.ipofield.gov.ph. You made the requirements to copyright, no? And uh, just place a subject, then pay through credit, debit card, or postal money order, and receive the e-certificate for copyright. Uh, even in the comfort of your home, you can just do that, click, and submit, 
Presto, you'll have your certificate. Okay, for as long as, you, of course, you comply with the requirements. So that's about copyright. Let's talk about trademark. Uh, just in passing, no? Because my colleague here is also going to talk about uh, trademarks. So create any visible sign capable of distinguishing the goods, trademark or services, service mark of an enterprise. Mark or stamp containers of goods are also considered marks, no? In general. Next. So examples, no? Okay. These are the symbols, of course. Most of these are very, very common to all of you. You have Jollibee, Rappler, ABS, CBN, Meralco, SM, Philippine Airlines, and all. Just looking. And of course, there's Cebu Pacific. Even without the names attached to them, by looking at their logo alone, because of course, these are familiar trademarks. You already know uh, what companies they are. Okay. Next. Types of mark according to composition, word mark. Symbol or design and combination for word mark. For example, you have Google. Oh, kung sa amin pa sa Bisaya, Google, no? Philips. And then you have symbol or design for like Nike or Apple. And a combination like ABS, CBN, no? In the service of the Filipino worldwide. And then you have Jermaine, mga kapatid. Then you have phrase or slogan tagline, no? Uh, Chooks to go. And uh, of course, Makdo, love ko to. No, uh, you see, you hear that phrase, you, you read that phrase, you know that it's Macdo. Even if there is no logo attached to it, you just say, for example, if I say, you just say, when, when I mention the phrase Langhap Sarap, uh, people would immediately recognize that it's Jollibee. But when I say Love Koto, people would immediately recognize that it's Macdo. Okay, next. Types of mark according to strength, no? A spectrum of distinctiveness for generic, you don't get protection for that. For descriptives, you may be protected subject to certain requirements. If it is subjective, no? Uh, arbitrary and fancy, fanciful, so you get immediate protection. I, I wish we had longer time for all of this next. Uh, maybe for next time. Marks of ownership, we have trade name, of course. The trade name for Jollibee Foods Corporation, which is actually Jollibee. And the trademark is Chicken Joy. The service mark is Jollibee Foundation. Next. And the collective mark, for example, is like this one, Aklan. Quality seal, that's collective mark. Next. Okay, functions of trademark as differentiator. No, You know, for example, that uh, Coca-Cola Sprite, Coca-Cola Sprite, Fanta, etc., our product of uh, Coca-Cola bottlers, Mountain Dew, etc., Lipton, etc., Pepsi products. Next. Importance of trademark registration, 3G. It grants you exclusivity. You have gains for recognition and reputation, and it generates goodwill for you. Goodwill meaning money and reputation. No, your brand is being built. That's why there is actually value to that brand. Just for example, not just uh, for example, uh, UP, no, just the oblation. Uh, uh, Secretary and Eric and I went to UP Diliman and uh, just the oblation, our oblation there, no, it's uh, ang ABS CBN uh, will do shooting and um, expand lang, no, ng, uh, ng oblation, uh, ABS CBN will pay money. No, and uh, if uh, you use the oblation as logo, emblazon in a t shirt, you pay UP for that, okay? So trademark, TM as valuable business asset, trademark as marketing tool, goodwill as monetary value, trademark licensing, you can go trademark licensing agreement, and including franchise agreement, no? Which we actually do on practically a daily basis in the office. Trademark as collateral, no? And then important thing, Trademark is territorial. If you're protected in the Philippines, you apply for protection in the Philippines, you are protected only in the Philippines. You are not protected in Madrid. You are not protected in Bangkok. You are not protected in New York. You are not protected in Tokyo. You are not protected in London. But if you also applied in London via what we call Madrid protocol, you can go to the office and you apply via Madrid protocol, you can be protected in several countries of your choice within Madrid protocol. Okay, the protection is 10 years and renewable uh, every five years and it can last 
forever. May forever din, no? It can last forever for as long as you can show us the U, D-A-U, or a declaration of actual use. You have to show us proof that the trademark is continuously being used by the business entity or the company. Next. Oh, yeah. Filing of declaration of actual use or the U is a must, no? So, according to NICE classification, there are actually classes for trademark. Classes 1 to 34, that's for goods. If uh, that, that falls, your trademark falls uh, under classes 35 to 45, that's for services. Next. Oh, yeah. schedule of fees, very uh, mura lang, no? Affordable. Uh, 2,615 pesos, filing fee, etc. Uh, if you're a small entity and big entity. No? Of course, that's the 1% le legal research fee that's uh, uh, mandated by law. No? Okay, next. That's 1% only anyway. So trademark application, registration process over view, path. No, you start from application. Then formality examination, then uh, that goes through substantive examination, and then publication for opposition, uh, same as patent because, you know, for all we know, uh, you uh, the, the applicant may just have copied actually the trademark from uh, somebody else, although we also do trademark search, no? Which appears, no, on our uh, port, uh, I mean, our uh, record, uh, we can cover worldwide, no, for our trademark search. And then uh, you go issuance of a certificate of registration if you qualify and nobody contests your mark. And then we go for registration of registered PM. Okay, next. So these are uh, in a nutshell uh, for patent, utility model, trademark, copyright, industrial design, geographic uh, indication, layout design, integrated circuit, which I did not discuss anymore here for lack of time, and trade secret. Okay, uh, next slide. Of course, you can just go visit our office uh, if you want to know some more about this, if you are interested. No. Did you know, for example, that just for one uh, invention like cell phone, there can be several IPs in it. You can have patent in there for cell phone, trademark, industrial design, layout design, and of course, copyright just in one gadget no? you have several a bundle of ip rights okay next and of course here coca-cola the trademark did you know that uh the formula for a coca-cola and uh, coke at least no for this soda is uh still a secret to this day no nobody knows uh the formulation no for coke no so uh, it's not protected, it's kept secret. You call that trade secret. And the industrial design, no? You know, even for example, if I remove the name there, Coca-Cola, just the design, just the, the industrial design, we will know that it's Coca-Cola, it's not Pepsi, no? Okay, so industrial design. Next. So again, the best line is online, our uh, e-services, because we're online, our e-services are available to serve everybody anytime, anywhere anywhere in the world next okay so you can uh, go visit our website ipofil e-services if you want to file uh, for a trademark or invention just click any of this and submit request and you pay via paymaya dbp dragon pay just pay online use your credit card and all in the comfort of your home even if you're abroad you can do and you can do that Pay or file and then pay and then uh, if you uh, comply with all the requirements you'll be granted the certificate next okay so again pre-filing for trademark search these are the processes our e-services you can just click that go visit our website and click and all information are there next same for protect your invention apply for patent uh, go for our invention file online, also for industrial design. Next. Again, UM, trademark, copyright, and IP adjudication and mediations, or all of these are online already. Next.
post filing for trademark and patent, no? Submit the requirements and access documents from the comfort of your homes. Next. Again, we just launched this IPOFIL uh, Mobilis, no? A new mobile application delivering IPOFIL services in partnership with the Department of Science and Technology because we want to provide our publics with the best service possible. Okay? I guess that's the end. So, uh, thank you, uh, everyone. I hope I was able to help uh, the audience no, of uh, Rodolf uh, on this franchise hour. So, that's it. Thank you very much. Thank you, Rodolf. Thank you, Mr. Adrian Zablan, for the excellent explanation of all the services that the intellectual property is giving us and uh, you can read also the story of uh, Mr. Adrian Sablan in our magazine, Franchising PH magazine. He's an excellent contributor for the magazine. So he has okay, uh, thank you. So it's been uh, published. Thank you. In the December issue, there is uh, the first part of you sent for December. Very, you, yes, you, you sent a very long uh, yes, story. Yes. So we, we cut them into two. So the first okay. one will be the December issue. That so it's coming out in December? Yes, coming up uh, November 30. Okay. okay. Thank you. All thank right. you. So uh, we welcome now Dr. Nerek Acosta uh, to talk about the pineapples. <laughs> From political scientist to pineapples, particularly <laughs> Ulam pineapples, which is, and here's the connection to the intellectual property because we are actually uh, licensing sure. the process to people who are interested going into the pineapple business. Animal. So, okay. uh, Dr. Acosta, please tell us a little bit about it. Okay, well, first of all, I think. Um, We'll have an, the, the last uh, 15 minutes or so. Uh, salamat again to Mr. Uh, Sir Adrian. Dagan kang salamat. Uh, sa very comprehensive, very comprehensive uh, presentation on IPR, copyright, trademarks, the whole ecosystem of the intellectual property, uh, the, the whole discussion on that. I'd like to break mine down into four. I don't have the uh, slides all uploaded and we will not take time to because there'll be technicalities, uh, glitches here, the technical glitches. And so I hope you won't mind that I'll just flash a few of the materials here. Medyo mas primitive ta din hi, Sir uh, Rudolf Kotick. <laughs> I'm in the farm. I'm literally really in an agricultural place. It's a mini forest here in the farm in Bukidnon. So we'll make the best with what we have. Uh, so we won't bother with the StreamYard uh, uploading of, of, of some of the slides. But anyway, first of all, I'd like, in the background is my father. He's, he's re I'm really doing this on his behalf because I'm not the scientist, uh, horticulturist. I'm not the one who's uh, done work on agronomy and plant breeding and crop science to produce uh, varieties of tomatoes and pineapples and papaya and a host of other crops. Uh, my father was the um, chief scientist of Del Monte Corporation here in Bukidnon. And he came here uh, in the early 1960s, uh, my parents. So they're pioneers, although they're not originally from Mindanao. I am from Mindanao, obviously, because I was born and raised here. So ako po yung lumad nung... Uh, native Mindanao, North Mindanao and Bukidnon. My father, Dr. Juan Acosta, I used his uh, backdrop here uh, so that you can see that he is um, he's really the, the person behind all of this, uh, the driving force of the uh, very novel signature pineapple variety that we're talking about that uh, RK and the franchising, the franchising framework has helped. Uh, in terms of intellectual property by way of a licensing uh, format or agreement. And I'll get to that shortly. Number one, just very briefly, uh, my father has really had his whole life. He's now 87 years old. 
Um, he is he is he holds a doctorate in plant genetics and crop science. He is uh, very known in his field, uh, especially because it's 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 pretty rare uh, to have someone who has the kind of that kind of expertise, especially specifically in horticulture, in agronomy, in agriculture, in crop science, in plant breeding. Now he was uh, the 2004. Uh, outstanding Filipino for science and agriculture. And so we're very proud of, of not just the work he's done, but I, in many respects, what he has done for the larger community of farmers and food security and agriculture for the whole country. And in fact, for, for many other parts of, of the world, especially for Asia and Asia and tropical agriculture. Uh, the Ulam pineapple, I'd, I'd like to show you very, uh, so that you could see what it looks like. <laughs> there you go. That's the ulam pineapple. That's the license manual, but that's how an ulam pineapple looks like. It has a uh, crown. The crown actually sits on a neck, which is a very distinct, uh, which is a distinct feature of this variety. Now, it you can eat the core because normally you can't eat the core of it's too hard um, uh, for the uh, pineapple. But the ulam pineapple is uh, very supple. No? It's crunchy. It's like an apple. And he named it ulam kasi pwede niyong maulam sa salad, pwede niyong imix sa iba't ibang potahe o mga dishes. Uh, but it also is very sentimental for him because if you reverse ulam, na uulam mo ang ulam na matamis na matamis na pineapple, it is actually, it spells malu. Uh, the only daughter uh, of Dr. Juan and uh, my mother, um, she also a scientist, but became a politician, Dr. Socorro Acosta. And so Malu Ulam. Now, let's not get into the other varieties that just focus on Ulam, because uh, primarily we're very proud of the fact that uh, Ulam is a protected uh, variety. Yes, there you go. Uh, <laughs> thank you, RK. Uh, Ulam is a protected variety uh, by virtue of Republic Act 9168 of the year 2002. Although the variety, the specific uh, variety of Ulam was uh, protected formally under the Bureau of Plant Industry, which is uh, the Department of Agriculture. So if uh, Sir Adrian earlier uh, really explained to us the very nature of the intellectual property system, uh, the protected variety law of the Philippines, which is in many respects uh, related to the intellectual property rights of uh, the World Trade Organization, etc., in relation to certain specific products uh, not like what uh, Mr. Adrian Sublan said about, you know, manufactured goods or like Coca-Cola or Jollibee, McDonald's. So they're very specific uh, for franchising and they can have intellectual property and patents because they're products in the physical sense. Now, a, an ulam pineapple is an agricultural produce. And it does not fit necessarily strictly into how you would look at a Jollibee or a McDonald's product. Because remember, when you have a, a, a food product that is agriculturally produced, then you will have to take into account a number of other variables, not necessarily uh, in the same manner you would look at a production or a manufacturing of a certain good, no? Um, as we said, even a shoe, Nike or Adidas or even a, a particular bag or apparel. Now, it takes 18 months to grow an, a pineapple into full fruition until it bears fruit. And it has a lot of climactic, yes, a lot of different uh, factors and features because you would have to look at, you know, rain and the elements and soil and you know climate change now kung nagda drought o kung uh, matagal ho yung yung tag init at uh, may 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 flooding and he has to look at elevation because
pineapple grows best in higher elevations, and that's why it's best for uh, Del Monte Corporation here in Del Monte because uh, Bukidnon is a, at least uh, 800 to 1,000 meters above sea level. And so our farms are here, and this is where my father has developed for the, the last 25 years or so the actual uh, Ulam uh, signature variety. It takes 18 months. Ang Tagalo, masalimuot. It's also very land intensive. And so when we when we finally got uh, uh, RK, uh, Rudolf Kotick and his uh, franchising firm to help us, we had to reconfigure and rethink the very concepts of, um, of, of, of trademarks and patents and intellectual property system as a whole because... This is, a, is, this is a subset. It is a subset in the, in, in, with respect to a particular agriculturally produced, sensitive to the elements, to climate, to variables even like elevation and soil and fertilizer and the care and the horticulture, the care for the actual growing of the crop. So iba po, mas, mas iba siya. But, but, but the Plant Variety Protection Act of 2002 or uh, Republic Act 9168 actually really is a is that subset because we're protecting the right of the plant breeder we're protecting the right of the scientist the the crop scientist who develop precisely this kind of a variety so yun yun ang pinoprotektahan natin at ito ang isinabatas and there are many features like the four main features of Republic Act 9168 is um uh n u s n d d u s n at nabanggit yan sa slides ni uh, sir adrian because uh when you look at a variety that is agricultural that again has is, is a host of different variables involved and factors in the growing in the producing of it kasi nga nature based siya eh. Diba po? May, may human intervention, may farming, may agriculture. Pero in the, at the end of the day, hindi siya, a creation of the mind pa rin siya, as uh, Mr. Adrian has said, but it is, it is the process with nature that you guide it along. So the, the DUSN here is distinctiveness, and this is all embodied in the law in Republic Act 9168. It's the law, it's, it's distinctiveness, um, Kakaiba siya. It is uniform. Hindi siya nag, nag, nagpapalit-palit. Once, once it's already a variety, itanim mo siya ngayon o next year o kung kailanman, ganun pa rin. Ganun talaga ang labas. Uniform. Stability. Hindi siya nag-iiba because the, the variety itself is stable. That, that the agriculture and agronomic scientific work that has been put into it has already stabilized. And then finally, it's newness. Uh, yung novelty na sinasabi ni Sir Adrian, nag apply dito yan. It applies here because bago. Bago siya. Walang ibang nakagawa ng ulam. No one else but Dr. Juan Acosta. And so that is his protected variety. And that is the right that as a plant breeder, as a crop scientist, he is able to claim. Now, of course, there's a limit also, sabing as a previous presentation, may limit din sa number of years na nagkakaroon ng actual protection, may expiration din. Now, I have to go back to the implementing rules and regulations of Republic Act 9168 to see if meron bang uh, yung forever. <laughs> Pero sa pagkakaalam natin from the Bureau of Plant Industry, yung protection I may limit then, may two decades, 20 years. Now, because after after a while, that also returns to nature. At, uh, pangiging public property na rin siya, di ba po? But uh, the Bureau of Plant Industry is very particular about uh, the the fact that ang pinoprotektahan din na hindi pwedeng ibenta or hindi pwedeng nakawin is the actual plant material. Yung itatani mo, what you really are going to plant. That, that is what is protected. And then the licensing agreement that uh, the RK franchise uh, has helped us with. Oh, but that, that's the logo now that they helped design. Thank you, RK. That's my father <laughs> with his, and I use his standard hat 
farming hat here. Uh, ulam pine, farm fresh. You know what? What they've helped us with is kung magkakaroon ng sa, parang subcontracting or outgrowing ang ang mga feet, ang ang mga elements na maggovern nito ay yung mga tinulungan kami ng RK or we 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 commissioned them to help us so that any kind of a licensing agreement with any farmer who wants to grow it in the highlands of towards the Cordilleras or Baguio kasi highlands eh Quezon we have now some initial like Bataan uh, na similar yung climatic conditions to Bukidnon etc so eto ay nagiging partnerships natin and then they will be governed by a licensing uh, agreement that uh, as a licensor, kami po magsa- kasi kami po yung may protected variety na hindi patent pero yung rights na protektado yung mismong uh, mismong pinyang to. <laughs> so, I will end there because there are many other, and you know, if we get, by the way, if we have many other products in the future, uh, although naiisip pa lang to, for instance, kung may karing pinya cool or mga shake na pinya or kunyari kung mag canned goods tayo ng pinya ng ulam out of the Acosta Farms or the Juan Acosta Corporation edi eh, maiiba din po yung uh, mga lice, maka franchising na to di ba po kasi hindi to mismo yung ulam na pinya at i mean the the actual growing uh, but it is it, these are sort of other products that come out of the original signature protected variety of ulam. That's my nutshell uh, of how what, what I want to share. Uh, I know we're pressed for time, but I think uh, if you have any other questions also, you can always contact RK and contact the Juan Acosta uh, Corporation and Farms uh, because we, we'd really like to introduce ulam to the Philippines, uh, to many other regions of the country, uh, may iilan pa lang, and iba yung the world, as Mr. Adrian said, it's in the Philippines. This is a Plant Variety Protection Act here in the Philippines. So it can help with our food security. Yes, there are economic uh, benefits, and and obviously it will it will propel maitataguyod natin ang food security, ang atin pong mga agricultural uh, benefits ng ating mga community and, and also small farmers because ulam can be grown even in as small as one or two hectares. You don't need land intensive but you don't need, you know, so you can, it can be even just for the market na dyan sa mga palengke, sa pinakamalapit na syudad, etc. Like Cagayan de Oro for uh, Bukidnon or Iligan City or towards Davao. But uh, many smaller farmers can actually get into this kind of uh, into these kinds of agricultural endeavors with this special protected variety. So we look forward to that. And uh, again, thank you, RK, for this opportunity uh, this afternoon. Uh, be- before we end, uh, Dr. Costa, uh, let's talk a little bit about the technicalities of the, the licensing, okay? Yes, if any, yes, anybody yes. Ha- If anybody has a farm there, out there, you can get a license to plant one hectare or more on the Ulam pineapple, there is actually yes. no licensing fee, but you have to buy the planting materials. You have to buy the planting materials from the Acostas. And then we have also something called a sticker fee, because you have to use the the, the branding is the Ulam pineapple. So every pineapple yes. has to be individually branded with the sticker, okay? So to plant one hectare costs you around one point six million around 1.6 million okay as an investment all right so you can get in touch with uh 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 dr acosta or with us if you yes. are interested so i uh, thank you so much Dr. Nerica thank you Costa, thank you rk thank you sorry for, for the your... more primitive visual aids here <laughs> no 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 problem with that one i'll see you later at the end of the show okay? thank you Hang on, Godless, thank you. Yes, thank you. All right. Okay. Now, I'm introducing to you Mr. Sokri Malako. He's our trademark specialist. And the reason I invited him to talk today is because, you see, a uh, lot of people have a trademark, but they forget something very, very particular. And, and this is very unfortunate. A lot of people f- forget to file for the DEU, 
either within the first three years or then the fifth. And this is the topic, what uh, Sok will be talking now for around five minutes. They explain more on the importance of the declaration of actor use because so many people honestly screw that one up. Okay? So, it's okay. I put on your presentation and uh, take it away. Okay, so good afternoon, uh, viewers. Okay, so uh, actually, this presentation is uh, uh, parang uh, part of the presentation ni uh, Sir Adrian. So, uh, ito po ay para sa mga trademark owner dito sa Philippines. So, if you are not uh, a trademark owner or uh, hindi pa po kayo nakapag-register sa IPO, so, hindi pa po ito applicable sa inyo. Okay? So, there are several maintenance requirements to look after in order to ensure that the, trade, uh, or the trademark registration is keep valid and enforceable. So, um, trademark registration here in the Philippines is not only depends on its successful registration before the Intellectual Property Office of the Philippines. So, uh, it uh, also depends on the owner's ability to use the same in the Philippines. Okay, so under the Philippine trademark regulations, a trademark of uh, or, the, or a statement of actual use of a trademark is shown through declaration of actual use. Okay, so what is declaration of actual use? So declaration of actual use or DEU is a sworn statement duly signed by the trademark owner or a representative and notarized. The declaration of actual use or DEU essentially contains statements to the effect that the trademark is uh, actually being used in the Philippines and that uh, it is being used for goods and services identified and that the goods are being sold or the services are being rendered at a specific uh, store or locations here in the Philippines or through a specific website. Okay, so originally po, they are... Uh, there are uh, there were only uh, two declaration of actual use declarations of actual use or DEUs required to file under the Philippine trademark regulation. So first, the third declarations of actual use or the third DEU, which must be filed within three years from filing date of the trademark applications, and the second is a fifth uh, anniversary declarations of actual use also common referred as the fifth anniversary uh, the U, which is required to file during the fifth anniversary of the trademark registration. Okay? So, magsisimula lang po yung counting natin from the registration date. But, uh, uh, as per rule, as per rule, 204 of uh, IPO Phil uh, Memorandum Circular Number 17-10 or the Rules and Regulations of tra uh, on Trademarks, Service Marks, uh, Trade Names, and Mark or Stamp Containers of 2017 added another declarations of actual use uh, or DAO requirement. So the new uh, requirements is the filing of the declarations of actual use within one year from the date of renewal of the uh, trademark registra uh, registration and it uh, registration uh, or the registration once the previous 10 years term has expired. So, uh, para siyang uh, tinatawag na renewable declaration. So, uh, magjuju lang po ito pag uh, i-renew na po yung or na uh, i-renew yung uh, trademark uh, registration natin. So, uh, these are the deadlines uh, to file uh, the declarations of actual use. So, first, within three years, again, within three years from filing date of the trademark applications or the third declaration of actual use, 
again, magka-count po tayo uh, from the filing date until three years. Okay, so the second one is during the fifth anniversary of the registration of the trademark or fifth anniversary of uh, or fifth uh, anniversary declaration of actual use and uh, within one year from renewal of the trademark registration or yung tinatawag na renewal declaration of actual use. Okay, so yun po yung tatlong uh, declaration na kailangan po natin i-file sa uh, IPO. Okay, so these are the acceptable proofs under the uh, uh, trademark regulation. So under the latest regulations issued by the IPO fields on declarations of actual use or DAUs, uh, proof of actual use can be any of the following. So first, uh, labels of the trademark as uh, use, uh, actually used. Uh, second, uh, downloaded pages from reg uh, registrant's website clearly showing that the goods are being sold or the service are being rendered in the Philippines. And uh, photographs of labels, uh, goods bearing that the marks are this or actually used, brochures, advertising materials showing that uh, uh, use of the mark in the Philippines and uh, for the online seller, yung mga resibo po uh, na ginagamit natin na katunayan na ito po ay uh, existing or ginagamit natin yung uh, trademark natin dito sa Pilipinas or yung transaction po natin ay nangyayari po dito sa Pilipinas. And for uh, and the last one is copies of contracts for service showing the use of trademark. So even po yung mga contracts natin pwede pong gamitin. Okay? So what if po uh, nag-file po tayo ng uh, trademark uh, application tapos uh, within three years hindi pa po natin nagagamit yung uh, trademark natin. So ano pong mayayari kung wala pa po yung hindi pa po natin nagagamit yung trademark natin. So under the rules uh, under the rules uh, they are allowed to be extended. Okay? So the rules are allowed to uh, extend uh, extension of 6 months within which uh, the file uh, of the third declaration of actual use. Ibig sabihin po, ang pwede lang po i-file or i-extend ay yung tinatawag na third declarations of actual use. So, uh, ang um, uh, uh, extension lang po natin dito ay six months. So, uh, pag lumagpas po ng six months, well, uh, hindi na po siya uh, acceptable. Okay? So, dapat po uh, dito sa extension natin, ma-file natin within 3 years po. So, dapat hindi po siya lumagpas sa deadline natin. So, dapat na na comply na po natin to yung uh, extension uh, before the exp uh, the due date. Okay? So, the request for extension should be filed before the lapse of the original deadlines. Uh, to file the three declarations of actual use. So what if po lumagpas tayo sa deadline? So I'm sorry to tell you na hindi na po siya mari, uh, mah uh, mahabol, okay? So meron din po tayong tinatawag na declarations of non-use which is under the Intellectual Property Code of the Philippines, non-use of trademark is allowed in a certain instances. So pwede pala po na... Uh, hindi muna natin magamit yung trademark or uh, yung trademark natin pero meron po tayong mga certain cases, okay? So, the submission of declarations of uh, non-use or DNU is allowed under the following specific situation. So, ito po yung mga allowed, okay? So, first, uh, where the applicants or uh, registrant is prohibited from using the mark, uh, the mark in commerce because of the requirements imposed by another government agencies prior to putting the goods in the market or rendering uh, of the survey. So, pinagbawalan po tayo ng mga uh, government agencies na gamitin. Okay? So, number two, where a restraining order or an injunction was issued by the Bureau of Legal Affairs, this is actually part of the IPO 
uh, isang isa siyang uh, department sa IPO uh, yung pinatawag na Bureau of Legal Affairs uh, the courts or quasi judicial bodies prohibiting the use of trademarks so pag nag-issue po si uh, BLA si courts or quasi judicial na um, injunction so yun po so yun yung number three, uh, where the marks is the subject of an opposition or cancellation case. So pag uh, nasa opposition process po, kasi sa filing po ng trademark, dadaan po yan sa uh, uh, publication. So may mga instances kasi na may mga opposition, pro- uh, opposition may mag-oppose sa uh, trademark application nyo. So dun po natatagalan. So a while nasa opposition po, Uh, pwede na po kayong mag-file uh, ng declaration of non- uh, non-use dahil po nakapending pa po yung application nyo sa uh, Bill A. Okay? So, ano po ba yung magiging results pag hindi po tayo nakapag-file ng DEUs? So, non-filing of DEUs uh, when they are become due will cause the rejection of the application if the mark is still in the examination stage. So, pag nasa examination stage po, pwede po siyang ma-reject if hindi po tayo nakapag-file ng DEUs. Okay? So, if uh, uh, or the removal of the mark from the re- uh, trademark registry if the all, uh, if it is already registered. So, uh, pwede po siyang matanggal sa trademark registry pag hindi po tayo nakapag-file. So, pag-registered na siya, tapos hindi ka pa rin nag-file ng DEUs or yung third declaration of actual use, pwede po siyang ma-remove. Okay? So, uh, it is highly important that the trade uh, the, uh, the deadlines for the filing of declarations of actual use or DEUs is noted and that the necessary documents are filed when they are become due. So, again, uh, pag... Uh, Uh, pag uh, nag-due po yung mga tinatawag natin na declaration of actual use, uh, kailangan po natin i-comply. So magka- magkakaiba-iba po sila ng mga requirements of uh, mga uh, uh, mga due date. Okay? Pero yung mga requirements like yung mga uh, uh, sinasubmit natin mga proofs, pwede po siyang Uh, pare-pareho unless, uh, unless uh, i-reject ni IPO yung uh, binigay yung uh, five specimen or five materials kung saan nyo ginagamit. Okay, so uh, uh, that's uh, that's all. So, thank you so much. If you want to help or uh, Uh, need help to file or uh, file your trademark registration, uh, trademark, uh, uh, trademark, or uh, may concern kayo about the declarations of actual use, pwede niyo po akong contactin sa number na to, 8, uh, 8911-1966 or 0933-864-5553 or 0917-860-9329 or sa email ko na info at uh, franchiseassociation.biz. Okay? So, thank you so much and have a nice day. Sir? Thank you so much, Okri. And uh, before we before we close the show for today, we have still some announcements to do. Uh, so, today we had the uh, Let it come up. All right. Today, our topic was intellectual properties uh, with guests uh, Nerika Costa, Mr. Adrian Saplan, and Sokre Malanco. Then, uh, if, in case you're interested, you can have my book or about franchising. We're giving it away actually for free as a PDF file, more than 100 pages. All you have to do is request it uh, in any of our Facebook pages or wherever you see This video, you can actually request it. Uh, also, until this Sunday, we still have running the Cebu Franchise Expo, virtual edition, uh, at cebufranchise.com. 
you see the more than 35 franchise opportunities for the Visayas and Mindanao. Also, the Franchising PH magazine is online and you can read it anywhere in the world. Uh, 54 pages of information. Uh, the, on the left is the last edition. Uh, November 30, the next edition comes out with the nails that glow on the cover. If you need, uh, if you have a business and you want to franchise it out, please get in touch with us. We are Archie Franchise Consultancy. And you can get in touch with us at the numbers uh, 024 Manila 892 946. 892-2973 or the cell phone numbers 0917-874-3620. All right, and the next Thursday, our next and last for season one uh, is again on December 3, Thursday, 4 p.m. And we are doing a full franchise seminar uh, together with my marketing manager, uh, Shea Lumbes. She will be talking about buying a franchise and I will be talking about franchise development. So, and uh, I'm now at the stage where I will welcome back again our guests. Uh, Sokri is there, Mr. Dr. Nerik Acosta and of course Mr. Adrian Sablan. I would like to thank all of you for being my guest today. And I thank also all our, our viewers uh, who are watching now or later during replays. And I, you can, as I said, you can read the stories of the IPO also in our magazine written by Mr. Adrian Samland. And uh, I hope you're interested to get in the agricultural business and have uh, a plant, a whole Ulam <laughs> pineapple plantage of at least a hectare. All right. Thank you so much, gentlemen. Thank you. Thank you to all the viewers. Thank you. Salamat kayo.